Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Well, a very warm welcome to our worship this morning on this Remembrance Sunday. A particular welcome to the Deputy Lieutenant, Deputy Lieutenant Jay. Very good to see you with us again. And all those representing the services, and all those gathered here today as we remember those who have given their lives in the service of our country, and the Commonwealth indeed as well. A welcome to all those online sharing with us this morning in our worship. Very warm welcome to you all as well. We turn to the green colored booklets in our possessions. Hopefully we'll turn now to page three and you'll find there the prayer of preparation. So I invite you to join with me as we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins and penitence and faith. We pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things, in your beloved Son, the King of all, Govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin to be subject to his just and gentle rule who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Isaiah, chapter 11. 
A shoot shall come out from a stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all of my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is the word of the Lord.
with you. Hear the gospel of hear the gospel of our Lord. Hear the gospel of John. Glory to you, O Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one great has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servants do not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appoint you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I start with a, probably the most well-known poem from the First World War, Flanders Fields, and for good reason, really, I want to reflect a little bit more on the very last stanza in the poem. But let me read the poem for you, a wonderful poem to remind us on this Remembrance Sunday of the sacrifice, particularly those in the First World War, but every war since. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. That final stanza, from failing hands we throw the torch, be yours to hold it high. Something I want to reflect on briefly as we go through my few words this morning. But well, in most years, when we come to Remembrance Sunday, it can seem for us, or many of us, recollecting something in the distant past, the wars perhaps of the First and Second World War. Of course, Iraq is not that long ago, Afghanistan more recently still in our minds. But the war in Ukraine has come into our living rooms, into our lives, like no other in recent months. It's affected us all. We've seen much that has disturbed us, shaken us, and not far from us. On top of this, Ukrainian refugees, of course, have also come to share our lives with us here in significant numbers. We've got to hear their stories as well. The war in Ukraine has come very close to us all and in a kind of way changed us all too. Certainly when we've seen the terrors of indiscriminate bombing by the Russians, we've seen that close up and its effects. On top of this is the great uncertainty of just how this war will play out in the months ahead. 
particularly over the harsh winter, no doubt that will come, and then into spring next year. And we know the end is not in sight in any shape or form. Then, of course, there's talk too of strategic nuclear weapons being used, another terrifying aspect. God forbid that ever happening. So with that in our hearts, that closeness of the Ukrainian war, the poignancy of the poem in Flanders Fields, and particularly that torch that is thrown into our hands today to take up that quarrel with our foe and settle it in peace and reconciliation is of paramount importance. They lie dead in those fields and saying, well, we lie dead here. You have a duty to perform. Take that torch of light and peace. Don't break faith with us. Well, these soldiers who lie in those fields, the fruits of war and violence, they are the dead. Short days ago, as the poem reads, who enjoyed life, its richness, and now all taken away. We could say that's happening right now in Ukraine and many other parts of the world. Oh, the folly of all who would seek to go to war. Today is a reminder of that if, if there's no other thing for us to take away. The folly of war. Our passage from John forcibly reminds us of that central commandment of Jesus, that we should love one another. It is the hallmark of his life and mission, and it should be ours too to take seriously. And this must sound in our minds and our hearts as we witness another slaughter in those fields of Ukraine right now. As Jesus says in the Gospel reading this morning, he chose us, and he called us to bear fruit, fruit that will last, the fruits of his kingdom, which, of course, are justice, peace, reconciliation. Those are the fruits we all should be working for today. I'm sure many of us are wringing our hands, feeling helpless in the face of the tragedy unfolding in Ukraine. Just what can we do? How can we bring peace and justice? Not very easily is the answer, especially when dealing with a dictator like Putin. But we are responding, though, with a welcome we are given to refugees. The humanitarian support we can give to those affected there and in other parts of the world. The military support, too, in their defense. You've even heard some have gone over there and joined their forces, laying their lives down for their friends. I believe the, the, these to be the kind of fruits of love, really, for the people and the country Ukraine. In that wonderful prophecy from Isaiah, we have a glimpse of what the promise of God's kingdom will be, what it might look like. The wolf lying down with a kid, the calf and the lion, and the fatling together, and a little child leading them. This is a wonderful vision of how things ought to be a peaceful world where all live in perfect harmony. This will be a world where the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. It is all about getting rid of our big egos, our prejudices, and our ignorance, finding the common ground of our humanity that will bind us together, respecting each other, learning from each other, and learning to love one another. That is what Jesus asks of us, and we are commanded to follow him. Now all those soldiers in Flanders fields, in Falklands fields, in Iraqi fields, in Afghan fields, to name but a few, they are all saying to us, take that torch, that torch of love, light, and peace. If you break with us, we shall not sleep. Words we must take to heart today and every day, really. We must learn to turn our swords into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks to honor the dead who lie in those fields, to lay hold our hands on that torch of love, light, peace, and reconciliation. And love is the answer, friends, that is the answer that our Lord gives to us all. 
that we may learn to love even our foes. Much is asked of us as we come to a yet another Remembrance Sunday. And I pray that we will take it seriously in all the ways we can and sacrificially as they did to work for peace, justice, reconciliation in our world today. So today, all days in the year, it is a reminder of our call. Lest we forget to honour all those who have given their all to ensure safety, peace and justice in our world today. Amen. I invite you now to take to hand the green-coloured booklets as we share together our faith in, on page six, the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. Who has spoken through the prophets? We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, in union with Christ Jesus, let us now sit or kneel as we bring our prayers to our Heavenly Father. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give peace. For the servicemen and women who have died in the violence of war, each remembered by and known to God, may God give peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who love them in death as in life, Offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss. May God give peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return. May God give peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For civilian women, children, and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity, may God give peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For peacemakers and peacekeepers, for all who seek to keep this world secure and free, may God give peace. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, 
political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. May God give peace. Lord, in your mercy, for all who have asked for our prayers this day, including Jackie and Ted Hipkin, Rita, Miles, Margaret, Tony Rivers, Mike, Gillian Withers, Charles Neil Jones, Wade Stevenson, Jan and Vicky and family, Bob Higgins, Ashley, Rosie, and Matthew Purnell. And those in our, our ongoing prayers, including Carly Phillips, Kerry Ford, Lionel Reeves, Mary Henwood, Paul Johnson, Dean and family, Jackie Lloyd and Natalie, Edna Clark, Colston Wilcox, and the Ford family. May they know God's presence and comfort today and in the days to come. May God give peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have recently died, including Matthew Bennell, and those who have died at this time in years gone by, including Alice Patterson, Sue Trollope, Clifford Bertram Painter, Cecil Bateson, Margaret Barrett, Pat Westlake, Wendy Bartlett, Timothy Jenkins, Alexander Jones, Marjorie Harris, Robert Moore, David Sansom, and Nellie Blanchard. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we, sh we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future. For you are the source of light and hope, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Just a few notices this morning. Once again, a welcome to our Deputy Lieutenant, Jane. Lovely to have you with us today and the services that are here. Lovely to see you all. Just a quick few things. Congratulations to Jennifer Enderby on her 90th birthday. Is Jennifer down the back there somewhere? I don't know where Jennifer is, if she's there. Our 90th birthday today. We wish her a very happy birthday today. A big few thank yous, really. Last Sunday, we had a very special service there, wonderful lunch shared, wonderful input on various things. But we do thank Phil for all the work preparing the presentations last Sunday. Do remember that we've been encouraging everyone to think how they might engage further with the work of our church. One of these little pledge cards, there's lots of them at the back of church. Please take one if you haven't got one. Look at, see what you, how where you could engage with the ministry and mission of our church in different ways. Please take one with you and think about ticking a few boxes and bring it back to church. There's tea time church this afternoon at four o'clock, so no even song tonight. Christ the King is next Sunday. We're inviting everyone to share with us in a very special Taze service next Sunday evening at 6.30, an informal service of readings and prayers. Do come along. If you haven't ever been to a Taze service, come along next Sunday evening and join with us. Warwin Westbury, that's now continuing. We're on to our third week now, uh, every Tuesday from 11.45 to 1.15. If you know of anyone who is suffering with difficulties heating their homes or the cost of heating, it's an opportunity to come and join with us here in church, some fellowship, some lunch, all without cost. Just come along and join and have some fellowship. If you know of anyone who needs that, please encourage them to come along. Advent calendars are here. See Lorna Renshaw about that from Tradecraft. The Tier Fund Big Quiz coming up. Details on the, um, on the Pew Slip on the 19th of November. Rob Wilson is organizing it. We'd like to have many teams joining in and raising funds for their work. The Christmas wine tasting, also details of that. Tickets are available, £10, and speak to Mike West about that. And finally, 
Don't forget, what is truth? We've got a very important, wonderful opportunity to engage with that big, big question. Ridley Baptist Church at 10.15 to 1, Saturday, the 26th of November. Please book, if you can, details on the sheet at the back of church. Will you now please stand for the peace? To crown all things, there must be love, to bind all together and to complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation through your goodness. We have this bread to set before you, which earth has given, human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should always sing of your glory. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For you are the hope of the nations the builder of the city that is to come. Your love made visible in Jesus Christ brings home the lost, restores the sinner, and gives dignity to the despised. In his face your light shines out, flooding lives with goodness and truth, gathering into one in your kingdom a divided and broken humanity. Therefore, with all who can give voice in your creation, we glorify your name for ever praising you and singing. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and wine, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we now pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Just for those who don't normally receive, who are not normally with us during our usual Sunday worship, we receive the, the sacrament within tinted wafers, and you'll see exactly how it's done. The wardens will direct you as you come forward for communion, which starts from the back of the church, working its way forward. So please do follow instructions from the wardens.
Just to those who would like a gluten-free wafer, please come to see me on this side of the altar. And um, if you would like to receive a blessing, please hold a booklet or pew slip in your hand as you come forward.
Some words from the book of Revelation, chapter 22. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Let us pray. God of peace, whose Son Jesus Christ proclaimed the kingdom and restored the broken to wholeness of life, look with compassion on the anguish of the world and by your healing power make whole both people and nations through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me join together in the prayer after communion in the Breen booklets on page, yeah, page 11. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And I invite the Deputy Lieutenant and all the wreath bearers to make their way up here to the high altar to receive their wreaths. And then for the choir to follow on afterwards as we make our way down to the war memorial for the congregation following after the clergy party.
We come now to the laying of the wreaths, and I invite the Deputy Lieutenant, Colonel Jane Thompson, to lay the first wreath. Our second reading is being laid by Christopher Boone of the Royal British Legion. Oh. Wreath now for the Navy being laid by Gary Jenkins. Wreath being laid down for the army by Paul Wilcock. We lay a wreath every year on behalf of all the churches of Westbury on Trim, and Mary Clark will lay a wreath for us. Wreath is now laid on, on behalf of all the young people of our village, laid for us by Alex Hillier Jones. And this year we've also invited the Ukrainian community to lay some flowers. At our war memorial, Oksana Dokcheheva is coming forward to lay some flowers.
And I invite everyone who has a wreath to lay to come forward now and place your wreath on the wall memorial. Please come forward. Deputy Lieutenant now will read for us the Kahima prayer. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. On the reverse side of your order of service, I hope you've all got sight of an order of service. There should be quite a number going around, please. Make sure you can see. Tedder, born in Westbourne Trim, the elder son of Edward, George and Helena Tedder. The family were very well known in Westbury as his father was the registrar for births, marriages and deaths for the parish. The large family lived in Mill House near the bottom of Chop Lane. Herbert was a private in A Squadron, North Somerset Yeomanry and served in Belgium as a member of the British forces on the Western Front. He was wounded at Ypres on 17th of November and died on Sunday the 29th of November 1914, aged 29. He is remembered with honour at the Eep Town Cemetery close to the Menine Gate Memorial. Harry Gold, born in Westbury on Trim, son of William, John and Maria Gold, an old custodian. Harry was a member of staff at the Merchant Venturers Technical College. He was a Lance Corporal with the 12th Battalion Somerset Light Infantry and was killed on Tuesday the 6th of November 1917, aged 28, during the capture of Bathsheba by General Allenby's forces. He is remembered with honour at the Bathsheba War Cemetery, Israel. from the Second World War, Roy Baxter. Roy Baxter, who lived in Henleys, enlisted in the Royal Tank Regiment and was killed at El Alamein in July 1942. The Greenslade family, Elizabeth, David and Patrick. David and Patrick were twin brothers who lived with their grandmother Elizabeth in Eastfield, Westbury on Trim. Elizabeth died from injuries received on a, during an air raid on Eastfield in on the 13th of July 1940. Her grandson David was a private in the Home Guard and he was killed during an air raid on Bristol in September 1940. His twin brother Patrick 
was a lieutenant in the Royal Artillery who was killed in Northwest Europe in March 1945. A reading from the book of John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 6 and verse 27. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted, either by death or life, Hear our prayers and our thanksgiving for all whom we remember this day, and particularly in this place. Fulfill in them the purpose of your love, and bring us all with them to your eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal Lord God, strengthen and protect the forces of the crown. Guide those who bear command. Be with them in the day of battle. And in time of peace, keep them safe from all evil. Endue them with loyalty and courage. And make them bold in the face of danger to put their trust in you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join with me now in the prayer, the family prayer of the church, the Lord's Prayer. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Once again, the reverse side of our orders of service, we have the second hymn, Thine Be the Glory. Thank you. 
end our time this morning with God's blessing and then a verse of the National Anthem. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the king, the commonwealth, and all humankind, peace and concord, and to us and all his servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Hooray for great Shun! Banner party Shun! Bye.